Hello design students. Today we're going to be working with perspective, meaning how we can get distance or depth or depth of field. But before we do that, uh, we're going to play with some gradients with your Sumi ink and your large three inch brush that hopefully everybody has now. Um, so before we even start dealing with distance or perspective, uh, typically perspective in order to get uh, distance between the foreground, which is the ground that's closer to you, right, and the background, so let's say the ocean line, the landscape, the mountain range, right, the background, uh, typically there's a tonal range of gradients that goes from dark to light. You know, if you ever uh, looked out into the ocean and saw the boat, it's kind of hazy, or if you ever look uh, down the highway, right, all the way to the end of the uh, horizon line, uh, things diminish a little bit and they get a little blurry, right? And we're going to try to mimic that through in a more abstract way, but but what that is is, is loosely termed a, a gradient. And we've been working with gradient uh, in, in, the, in the past demo, so you should have an understanding of what that is, right? Simple uh, tonal range from dark to light, right? A gradient. But we're going to make a large gradient and then we're going to use that in the second step in order to create a, 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 a perspective. Uh, but before we do that, what we're going to do is prep your paper. So let's go ahead and get a good sheet of your 18 by 24 inch good drawing paper. And I went ahead and ta uh, taped mine down. So you should do the same thing because we're going to go ahead and wet this completely. So it's going to expand and shrink a little bit. Uh, and you know we want it to stay still. So go ahead and tape that down. And I want you to get your three inch brush, make sure it's clean. And first, let's go ahead and soak down that sheet of paper really well, all the way through. Again, um, if you don't have a three inch brush, you can always use the largest brush that you have, okay? But remember, something like what we're going to be doing uh, with this first step here, any brush would work that's a large brush. It can be a household paint brush, um, you know, a disposable brush. Uh, but go ahead and find something like that, and that's going to make the gradient go a lot smoother because we're, trying to, we're going to try to, our best to get a smooth gradient. We're going to have movement and texture because we're working with material, right? And of course your Sumi ink. So when we're working with Sumi ink material or ink, remember that it's all about playing with the randomness and not trying to completely control the form. Okay, now you see how, man, I've I've done two coats and that paper really does soak in that water quite a bit, especially this good drawing paper. So make sure you, you give it a good soak. I'm even dripping water on top of that to really get it wet. Sometimes a good sponge uh, works too. You know, a nice, good, clean sponge, brush it over, or uh, like I said uh, earlier, a, a squirt gun works great as well. Okay, so that seems nice and um, soaked and wet all the way around. Again, you want to really wet this time, so don't be shy on that water. Go ahead and soak it as well as you can all the way to the corners. All right, now I'm going to get some of my Sumi ink here. Put it on my palette. We don't need very much. This goes a long way, so go ahead and about a tablespoon is what I'm I'm putting on there. Okay. Then what I want you to do is we're going to choose one side. It doesn't really ma uh, matter what side you choose. Okay, but choose one side for your dark, one side for your light. So I'm going to go ahead and do my dark over here and let it bleed this way. So I'm going to really soak that three inch brush. Still working with that three inch brush. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make a line there. Okay, then I'm going to continue on with another line overlapping just a bit. Okay, halfway overlapping. See how I'm moving fairly fast. Again, overlapping one more time. Not dipping any more ink. Allowing that the water to do the 
the shading for me. Now at some point, I'm about halfway through here, I want to go ahead and clean off my um, brush here. Okay, it doesn't have to be completely and then continue on. Okay, now if that gradient is not getting any lighter, go ahead and really clean off that. We're trying to lighten that up and you see how I'm, I'm not overlapping very much anymore. Not overlapping very much anymore. Okay. Now this last one, I'm going to go ahead and just lightly brush that up. And there you have it right there, the gradient. Now remember, you have to move pretty swiftly with it. Um, after you're done with that, don't touch it. Let it bleed. Let the water and the ink soak into it. Um, and then we'll continue on with the next step. So you see here, I have the finished gradient that's drying. And always observe the processes in between, even though, though it's something simple like this. Um, I always like watching <laughs> ink dry. And you'll notice that it gets a lot lighter. So what you're going to do is wait till this wash here gets completely dry so maybe bring it out into the sunlight put a fan next to it and uh, let it dry completely before we continue on with the next step so for the second step of the process i want you to tear out another sheet of your 18 by 24 paper and we're going to hang it horizontally this time. So hang it sideways. Uh, you're also going to need your 18 inch metal ruler. And if you have one, let's go ahead and grab a meter stick, a yard stick, um, uh, or any sh long straight edge, something that you can at least get some good distance with if your 18 inch ruler isn't long enough. I also want you to grab a hold of a quarter. Okay, just a regular 25 cent quarter. So if I have an 18 inch long or wide sheet of paper, I'm going to split that right down the center. So that will be nine inches right there. And I'm going to go ahead and make another nine inches right there. So I can go ahead and make a line down the center first. And I have my charcoal pencil. You can use any pencil. Okay. I like using my charcoal pencil. It's a little bolder. I'm going to go ahead and make another nine inches right here so I can get it nice and straight all the way through so I have a horizon line basically right down the center so go ahead and split your paper in half so that will be nine inches and make a nine uh, a line all the way across again that's why a meter stick would be good after you do that. Let's get that nice and clean now. Okay, now, after that, what I want you to do is go ahead and grab a quarter. Okay, any quarter. And I want you to place that quarter anywhere above that horizon line. That'll be the bottom, that'll be the top. All right, so think of this as the sun or as a focal point. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, work around this area right here. Now my gradient is going from this direction that, that's the way I applied my gradient from my dark to light. If you did yours the other way, it's really up to you. But since I want my light source to be from this direction, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it just like I did with the gradient from here to there. So I'll go ahead and place it up here, okay? I'm going to probably, that's, that feels pretty good to me, and I want you to go ahead and outline that quarter. So that's going to be our vanishing point that we are then going to try to create some perspective, some one point perspective. We have one point right here, and we're gonna to try to have that point go into the distance with a one point linear perspective. Okay, 
So here is the focal point or the vanishing point. And remember, you are to get a quarter and you're supposed to choose a space above the horizon line. And um, there's my horizon line. Remember to split your paper equally in two, which is about nine inches. Okay, and make a nice sketch line as your horizon line. And I place underneath the dried gradient. I put it outside in the sunlight. Didn't take that long to dry. And you can see how um, I'm already planning on combining these two. So we're going to get some glue later on and we're going to cut the gradient into parts to add it to the top. So before you start, I want you to look at your gradient and look at your vanishing point and then we'll continue on to the next step. Next step is we're going to grab your 18 inch metal ruler and grab your pencil. I have my charcoal pencil, either one would work. And we're going to split some the, the, the composition up at the top and the bottom a little differently. So we're going to split the top right of the horizon line into eight sections. So I want you to go ahead and somewhere write eight, just so you remember how many. And at the bottom here, which would be your ground, right? We're going to go ahead and split that into four sections. So the top eight and the bottom four, and I just had it right written right there so I can remember. And all I'm going to do is choose, okay, an angle, right? And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of choose this angle right here. I have the corner here and I have the quarter or the circle here there and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get that nice and clean. Again, if it's not long enough, go ahead and use your meter stick or your long straight edge and go ahead and just draw a line right there all the way to the end. All right. So that'll be okay. Line number one. And then I want you to think of another place. Think of sun rays. Think of a tunnel going in or sun rays coming out and I'm going to go ahead and split this into another one. Remember, I want eight sections, so I'm going to have to fit it all in. Let's move some things around up here. I'm going to go ahead and do that right there. Let's see how that works. I'm going to narrow it down just a bit. Okay, doesn't really matter. Remember, it's, you know, it's uh, definitely, you know, there's always license for some creativity. And nothing ever has to be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So that's one. Okay, I need to do that. I need to make eight of them. So some of them might need to be a little bit narrower than the other one so I can fit all eight in there. So here's two. I'm going to go ahead and make that there. Remember, you can do it. If you don't like that line, get your white eraser out or your gum eraser and just remove it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you can see the mistakes at all. So I have two sections, one, two. Okay, I need eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here, make sure I can fit them all in. Doesn't matter, they can be different sizes, different widths, none of that really matters. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just making sure I can fit all of them in. Make another one here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, gonna go ahead and make five. And always good to do preliminary sketches. You can do this drawing here in your sketchbook, you know, um, to make sure you, you know, have a plan again, or let the process just, you know, guide your way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let me come down here. Six. Let me split this in two. Make sure I get that just right seven, eight. So you can see here where I've split my top of the horizon line into eight sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. And at the bottom here, we're going to split this down into four sections. And I want it in a different direction or I want it, you know, in a different pattern from your top of your horizon line, from the skyline. Okay, and think about train tracks. Think about a road of some sort or a path or a trail. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, make this my point here. Actually, so I'm going to go ahead and make this my point here. 
I'm going to go ahead and do one line here. Just a nice pathway. So I have one. Doesn't matter. That works well for me. One, two, three. I have one more. Okay, now maybe there's a another line guiding this one. Who knows? Doesn't really matter. Maybe there's a road. And on the side of that road, there's a sidewalk of some sort. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I am going with the angle towards a certain point. So that's kind of what we want to do is make sure that we are going towards a certain angle to a certain point in the background to create that, that perspective. Okay, next step. Uh, as you can see, uh, what I've done first is I went ahead and split my gradient line with the same horizon line, nine inches, and go ahead and create that line first. And I've also, um, I have my drawing here of my two point perspective. You can see how I have two points that are going into the distance, you know, the sun or whatever that would be. And of course the end of this road trail or just this right perspective form uh, next thing i want you to do is get your scissors okay or you can get a box cutter with a straight edge and let's go ahead first and let's cut this completely in half all the way and remember this is just a real simple exercise on just how to develop an easy two-point perspective um, but if you were drawing and painting, you know, you would utilize the same type of line construction to rough out or create a format of your image. Again, remember, that could be the sun, that could be the boat, that could be the cabin in the wilderness. So a simple instruction just to, you know, understand the basic aspects of two-point perspective. So you can see how I've split my white drawing here right my blank and then my set of lines and I have my other one and what we're going to do is I want you to cut out okay four sections from the top so I'm just dealing with the top right now I moved the bottom half to my side and I'm just dealing with the top okay and I, we're going to basically just use half of the amount of these triangular forms here and we're going to collage them back on so we're going to have a a stair stepping or a blank white spot and then a gradient spot, a blank spot, a gradient spot, a blank spot, a gradient spot. Blank spot being the sheet of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of think about first, okay, do I want a large white gradient coming from this point or do I want a exposed, a dark gradient? So I'm going to go ahead and basically I'm going to cut this one out right here. Let me just cut out one section first. And maybe with this part of the process, you know, you just cut one section out and we'll lay it on top and see how that looks. Let's do this real fast. I do want you to be conscious about cutting your line straight in order to create, to create a good perspective. You know, we're going to need some good straight lines. Get this curved out. I want you to keep the integrity of that circle as much as you can. Okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place this and line it up just like so, okay? Now I might change my decision. I'm just placing that there because you can see how we're getting the exact same composition. Cut out this second side. Okay. And you can see I can do the same thing. I can remove that and keep that there. You know, if I put both there, you know, doesn't, you know, won't show me much of a gradient. So I'm going to keep that one there. I kind of like that. 
I'll keep that there. Now I, I want to create another negative space or a white space, a gradient space, and then a white space. So I'm going to have to cut this one out right here at the top. Now I know these might be um, not representational fully. I mean, we are creating a horizon line. We are creating a vanishing point, two vanishing points. So with you know a drawing like this, the viewer is going to develop the narrative in itself. Now, by all means, remember you can always get more creative with this process. Okay, so you can definitely do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and place that. You can see how that top line can really help guide it. There we go. So you see how I've created this separation of these two forms from negative space, gradient space, negative space. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with the other one. So if I have this, here is my the rest that I have. Okay, I'm going to keep that gradient. I want to cut this one out right here. Let me cut this one out and add that. And I can place that, fit that right in the corner exactly where it's supposed to go. Okay, place that up there. Right, and I have, okay, I want this gradient right there. Here we go. So I'm going to want to cut this this one out there, leave that one a gradient space. And like always, you can be more creative or you can follow my exact instruction. Now you can see at the top here where I've finished cutting out my negative space in between my gradients to create some separation. And it's already with the gradient of the dark to light, it's already kind of receding into space. I want you to keep a hold of your circle here because when we're done, we can place that on to make a nice, good, bright circle. But always think of the lines in between. Now again, remember, you can be more creative with this. You can definitely cut some zigzag forms in here, some wavy forms. So you can alter some of these shapes uh, that you want. Just be sure that you have plenty of material to, to work with the, uh, the basic two-point perspective, uh, uh, perspective that we're working with here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go to the bottom here now and kind of do the same thing. Now, after I've organized and made some decisions with the arrangement at the top, and remember, this is just a basic design that I'm coming up, up with. You can add some different shape to those sun rays coming out. So uh, let's see what happens. Again, remember, there's really no wrong answer. Just the attempt of you trying is, is you're going to something interesting will happen. Now, the bottom here, you can see how I'm developing a ground from the bottom. And I want you to look at it and, and make some decisions if you need more lines, go right ahead. Um, we can add some more. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I think that uh, with my bottom design and this road or trail that I have going into this point here, right? I can add, I could use a couple of more lines so I can make the image a little bit more dynamic and make the ground. So if you need to, go ahead and add some more. So let me do something here. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one right here. Okay, just a slight angle because I want some separation from this horizon line. So I'm going to add another line here. So I want you to, you know, if you need it, add some more, because I think some ideas will start to flow uh, as you start working on your own in your own process. So I'm going to add one line there so I have another section I can play with. And over here, I'm going to add another one. Let me see. Uh, right over here, another, another line, okay? I'm going to see how that looks. See, I made some subtle decisions here. Just one there, one there, and I think it's going to help me because we're also going to cut out some of this negative space and add that to the top. Okay, so after I've done that, I want to go ahead and make a decision which part of this section do I want to uh, keep as a gradient and which ones do I want to keep as a, um, as a right angle, I mean, sorry, as a um, 
as a negative space. I want this to be almost like a road or a highway going into the distance. So I'm going, going to go ahead and cut this shape out next. Okay, I'm going to lay that on there. Remember, work a little, work slowly. Take your time so you get a sense of, you know, understanding of what you're doing here. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, I like that road kind of going in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead, and I think I could use another gradient right here because I got a lot of my darks right here. All my darks are being hidden, so I'm going to go ahead and just basically, you know, have these two strips. Let's see how that looks. To the top just to see how it looks we're not gluing down right now we're really just placing first okay, put that there. And then I have this sharp one here yeah that's that's better I like that better just that simple just there we go all right so you see I've made a decision here and here okay I got a little bit of I got some decisions to make over here so what am I going to do? Again, you can add more. Okay, so if that's not enough, I think I need to add one more shape to this. I'm going to go ahead, right, and let me see if I can add one more. Look, that's all up to you. Okay, well, yeah, I think I'm going to come down to this corner from that point right there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut this one out right there. So I have that negative space. You can work with your gradient. You have plenty of paper. You mess up, take another sheet of paper out. Okay. And you also have a lot of scrap paper. So all the cutouts you have on this side, you know, you could definitely use it. Okay, then that's just a subtle little section up there I want to keep. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I have my cutouts. I've made decisions of separating my gradients with my two points to my two vanishing points. Uh, once you're happy with that, and uh, you know, once you've made some own, uh, of your own decisions and taken some creative license, let's go ahead and pin it back up and let's start gluing things down. Okay, right now I'm starting to glue so you can see how once you take away some of the noise up there because uh, I haven't had it composed just yet or glued down you can already see some interesting perspective happening here to this point. So it's a simple example of one point perspective. Placing another point up there which would be my circle or my sun creates the second point or two point perspective. Now, just want to make sure, you know, things are going to be working out. So take your time. Remember, uh, craft and, and, you know, making sure that things are glued down around the edges so we get the clean edge line. So just making sure that even though it's a simple assignment, you still want it to be a good piece of art. Projects like this are very interesting to look at years later. Because when you live with art and make it, but when you live around art, it definitely changes. Meaning that it'll change not only visually because you're going to be a different person every time you 
look at it every year that goes by you'll have gained more knowledge and the perspective of that piece of art from your perspective will change so you can see just how simple that is right there uh, you know creating a shape that breaks up the gradient you know are interesting ways to work um, so you know we're dealing with perspective here but imagine if I had 50 of these you know going in a radius in a circle and how dynamic that would look um, you can really see the um, the use of these types of formulas you know with uh, in conjunction with your imagination your creativity and more importantly your content what you want to say with it so be sure to glue things down properly and then we'll see how it looks so I have everything glued down here but I don't want to forget to cut out my circle here so you should have that and make sure that's nice and cleanly cut And that should definitely clean up that focal point or that vanishing point nicely. Now I have it posted up now and you can see how I have some pretty interesting already some two point distance and you know maybe you can do something else with it maybe uh, grab your charcoal pencil um, and maybe you can add some things if that you see like I have this kind of dark part right here you know what happens if I just do a little bit of gesturing and you know maybe add a, a little pine tree or something there just a little gesture maybe there's another light form there it doesn't even have to make sense it can just be some um, some marks, some things in a horizon, you know, small little traces of possible foliage, maybe a little house, just depends, you know, it's really just making some interesting marks. Maybe there's some interesting fencing here. Now again, this is only if you, uh, if you feel that you you know, come up with something. You see how I'm making some marks and I'm conscious about, you know, following that geometry of, of the shrinking of that line and compressing it in as it goes into the background. You know, just an old Ricky stick fence, you know, one of those fences that's been there for decades. Just going into that distance area. Here, let me zoom in a bit so you can see. All right? Just, just some information. You know, maybe some something a little more geometric over here. Maybe. You know, see how I'm just loosely gesture drawing. You know, you know structure. Maybe there's a little object down there. You know, that's what's great about kind of work like this you don't need much to kind of allow things to to uh you know, to happen you know maybe old bent wire there it's about to, oh maybe something hit it you know collapsed it a little bit you know just let it go let it flow me another one I'm a little more aggressive over here since i'm in the foreground you know, one of those naughty old fence wires you know one that's rusted and you know maybe there's a little broken tire there you know again this is only if some ideas start to to arrive now up here I'm, I could see some interesting um you know some interesting cloud formations at the top you know zoom in get some interesting clouds you know got the got the cold sun right maybe just a just a random, just a form. Remember how we smudged? Get a little bit of shape in there. Maybe a little bit more. These, these 
clouds. And over here too. And just a little haze of stuff. Let that randomness do do its own thing, you know. Overlap that sun ray too. You know? Right? Maybe there's a a crow, you know, kind of flying in the distance there. There we go. Right. Maybe there's another bird of crows up here. Let's go into the distance. Maybe there's another crow. Just finding something to do. Big crow right there. Let me get a little form to this one. You know, it doesn't have to be much. And you can see how with those marks, how a world can be just created, you know, that cold road in the distance, you know, fence line, rickety, barely holding up in the, you know, in, in the stresses of time. So hopefully you can find some imagery, some marks, and just have fun with it. Give it a shot. Now I was thinking about what are some possibilities on the inside, this side. I have the the old fence on that side. Maybe just 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 some cold sprigs of grass, you know. Just you know. And how how do I make that flow into the background? You know, let's get let's get a lot more detail up here, you know. And then smaller as I go into that background. weeds, you know, stuff nobody cares about, but it's always there, you know, just a little bit of stuff, you know, you can put a little, a little rabbit peeking out, you know, saying, hey, you know, I'm going to have to cross that road at some point, so, you know, have fun, you know, maybe those tops of those grass, there's a little, little sprig of flowers or foliage or something, you know, just something at the top. There's really nothing you, you can do to go wrong, we know, when you do some 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 stuff like this, some interesting natural movement. You know, it's almost if you just think about how that grass looks in your memory. Sometimes your hand just follows. You know, and that's sinking in, you know, and flowing into the background. So, you know, have fun. Create something. There's no wrong, it's really just the attempt that makes the art. So here is the finished drawing. And you can see how with those two points, we are really getting some distance. I did a little gestures here of some road lines just to get a sense of, you know, almost like an ice road, you know, a cold ice road. One of those slick ones oh, out there in the middle of nowhere, you know. Um, and over here we have, you know, a cool, you know, the sun, the cold sun, one of those, you know, wintry, bright suns shining through the overcast in the fog, you know. So that's what kind of turned out. Remember, you can put that sun in the center, have it radiating in the center. You can have it on this side, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, you know, always preliminary sketches possibly in your sketchbook before you, you, um, you approach it um, here I have some you know you know the, the gesture lines are really added but really what's doing it is the, the the gradient I mean that's what's really pushing that that a distance is that gradient of that tone coming here to the left and you see how with the the gestures of the crows at the top really help you know that as well so you know um, pretty pretty uh, pretty fun to do I really hope you guys explore let's do a little zoom in so we can get into this into this cold landscape that, um, you know, I've created, you know, um, you can see how simple those background forms are with the trees and that little thing right there, whatever that is, doesn't matter. It plays a role. Um, and those, uh, shapes, those, uh, geometric negative space shapes, you know, push that form backwards. So simple geometry, is really the key when you're looking at um, perspective. Even though it's covered up with all the detail of the uh, of the of, uh, of the f whatever that 
art is, whatever the painting is. It could be a, a classical painting of, you know, robes and Greek mythology. But if you simplify it down to the geometry, um, you know, you see the mathematical geometry that, that and you see the, uh, the distance. You see how it was formed because of the perspective, the formulas of perspective. And that's really the anchor of a lot of good art, is the composition, the use of elements, and the uh, use of perspective, if that's the case in the painting, and a lot of everything else, the stuff that most people really appreciate, the detail and the flesh tones, well, that's just filler. A lot of it depends on how good the artist has designed those elements. So I hope you have fun uh, working on your two-point perspective assignment, and I look forward to seeing some outcomes. Thank you very much.